What foods can and cannot be sold as cottage foods in Georgia? So in this video on cottage foods laws, the brand new YouTube channel launched to help all cottage food operators understand the laws and show you how to market, promote, and grow your food business from home. We are gonna cover what you can and cannot sell, specifically the food products right now. All right, so welcome back to Cottage Foods Laws. This is a YouTube brand new channel that we launched. We are not new to YouTube. We actually have several food entrepreneur channels. We'll have those links down below. And as well, I'm gonna cover specifically in this video, what foods can you and can you not produce in Georgia under the Cottage Food Laws. We'll have a link directly to the Georgia State website where you can actually uh, do a little more investigation and research for yourself definitely take a look at that because cottage food laws do change periodically. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Damian Roberti. I'm a food entrepreneur. My wife and I have been doing our own business, our own thing, if you will, for the past 13 years. We have uh, multiple e-commerce food businesses. We have stores on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and everywhere else in between. And of course, we started our, our YouTube channel from the experience that we've gained. All of the people that we met over the years and food entrepreneurs who are friends of ours, we bring together a culmination of all that information to help you understand how to get started in the food industry. So can, what foods can you and can you not make in Georgia? That's a great question. Now, based upon the Georgia website, they actually don't have a specific list of foods that you cannot make, but I'm gonna go through the foods that you can and then give you an idea of the types of foods that normally throughout each state are really not allowed to be made at home just due to, of course, the type of pH levels that it might be and the processes to make those particular products. So let's get started. So loaf breads, rolls, and biscuits. So any type of bread product or roll or biscuit, if it, as long as it doesn't have what's known as a potentially hazardous ingredient. Damien, what exactly does that mean? So any type of a product, let's say a cheese danish. There's a good example. Cheese danish, of course, is a baked good item, but on the top, it's got a cheese in the center of it has to either be kept at a certain temperature or a time sensitive product. So anything that's time or temperature sensitive, those would be considered potentially hazardous. That also means the fact that there could be bacteria that could grow obviously in the cheese if it's not kept at a certain temperature. If it's not eaten and enjoyed within a certain time frame, within just a couple of days of making, you have to refrigerate it or you have to freeze it. So these are products that if left out alone, they could become potentially hazardous if they actually were eaten or consumed. So. <clears throat> Breads, loaves, biscuits, and rolls, those are obviously things that you can make, but of course they have to be consumed pretty relatively quick, to be honest with you. Cakes, except for those that are required refrigeration. So if you have, want to start a cake business from home, you can do that, but you need to make sure that the frosting, icing, or any of the ingredients inside can't be refrigerated, okay? Georgia, by the way, when you apply for their application process, you have to actually list the products that you intend to sell because on that actual uh, permit or, or um, license that they're gonna give you to sell, all of those products will be listed. Those are the eligible items that you're gonna be able to actually sell in the state of Georgia under their cottage food laws. Next up, pastries and cookies. So cookies and pastries, <clears throat> there's literally an infinite amount of these different types of cookies. It definitely, of course, cookies is literally limitless. Why are cookies so popular? Number one, they're very inexpensive to make, super easy to make, super easy to package, but you can actually come, they can create them and they come in multitudes of different flavors, different toppings, different ingredients, it's just endless. So they're very inexpensive and have a very big margin. You can make a huge profit on them as well. Candies, confections, and fruit pies. Now, of course, candies and confections, again, another type of product that's not limiting at all. There is a hundreds and hundreds of variations of candies that you can make. It doesn't specify if you can't make lollipops or if you can't make hard rock candy or even brittle. Just says candies and confections. Brittles will probably fall in line with that. You can make literally hundreds of different variations of brittle as well. Next up, you've got jams, jellies, and preserves. But fruit butters, you can't necessarily do fruit butters. That's something that they say that you cannot make as well. Jams, jellies, and preserves, highly popular product, can be sold almost anywhere that you go. But of course, that has to be listed. Remember, when you apply for this, you have to put that on the application. Dry herbs, seasonings, and mixtures. <clears throat> this is one of the big ones that we always talk about on Marketing Food Online, which is my other YouTube channel. We have almost 100,000 subscribers. You definitely wanna check out that link down below. But on that channel, we have a ton of videos about spice businesses. When you buy them in bulk, you create small batches, or if you have a specific type of mix that you have, and you wanna start selling it locally, get some feedback, and then from there, transition from a cottage food home-based business 
over to a commercial kitchen, start selling it online or getting on Amazon or start selling a food product on Amazon. These are really popular items. Seasoning mixes, dry herbs, it's unbelievable. The market is gigantic for those. In Georgia, you can actually do that from home. Trail mixes, granolas and cereals. Now, of course, cereals, I'm, I've actually never dabbled in creating a cereal, but trail mixes we actually do in our commercial kitchen. Hugely popular seller online. Of course, when you're at home, under the cottage food law, you have to sell them locally. But again, it's a great way to test a product and get some proof of concept before you dump into something bigger. Coated and uncoated nuts. This is huge. Chocolate coated nuts, seasoned nuts, roasted nuts, or even uh, roasted dry, dry nuts. Any type of nut variation you can definitely create through Georgia Cottage Food Law. <clears throat> One of the most uh, profitable products <clears throat> next to cookies on my list would actually be nuts because you can get them in bulk online. And again, if you want to check down below, when you go over to that blog post, I mentioned about the links to the Georgia State website. I will have a couple links for suppliers where you can get some of these products like nuts in bulk and bulk and such. Check out that link for sure. Head over to our website and take a look at that list. Vinegars, flavored vinegars, and popcorn, cotton candy, and popcorn balls. Popcorn, cotton candy, number one seller at any farmer's market festival or fair. Every child, every even adult loves popcorn, popcorn balls, or even cotton candy. It's a very minimal amount of investment even for any of these products. If you even get a popcorn popper, you can invest that for anywhere from three to $500 and have a business up and running that you can sell locally at farmer's markets and festivals and such. Cotton candy as well. That's an item that's super inexpensive to make. That's probably on my list. If it would be on the top three, that would be number three. Cotton candy costs literally pennies to make, and people charge in some places up to five to six dollars per serving, which is astronomical. You sell 100 units of those in a, in a day at a farmer's market, you can clear $500 like that. So in this list of Georgia cottage foods, that is the ones that you can make. There is endless supplies. If you let your creativity go wild, you can create so many variations of these food products. And let's dive into what you can't make. Now, with this in mind, you have to keep in mind the items that you can't make are specifically set up for a purpose, okay? And the reason what I mean by that is most people think that cottage food laws where you can create food from home would actually allow you to create things like pizza or sandwiches or any type of item like that, hamburgers, fries, fast food stuff, stuff you find on a food truck. The reason being, <clears throat> is a lot of people don't go through the training necessary to understand how to prepare those food products. So under cottage food laws, they limit it by the state as to what you can prepare because of the safety issues. A lot of people may dive into the idea of creating some food products. Maybe they prepare food or they cook dinners and lunches for their family, that's fine. But if you don't have proper training on how to store ingredients, how to store cooked foods, if you've already prepared it, you have to keep it into a certain temperature or refrigerated, they don't understand fully how that works, a lot of people can get sick. So some of the items that you can't make, and this is pretty generalized actually across a lot of states when it comes to cottage food, is meat jerkies. For instance, creating your own beef jerky or chicken jerky at home. There's a process to that. And of course, that's with raw meat. If you don't do it properly, people can get sick. Bacteria can develop in the product. You may not even know it, and you put it in a bag and someone eats and they get very ill. So things like that, salsas, barbecues, and ketchups, these are items that have acidity levels. And if those acidic levels don't reach a certain pH, volume, pH ratio, then those are things that can cause bacteria again, people can get sick from. So things like salsa, canned or pickled products. Pickled products in general are banned in almost every state. There's a couple actually that you can do that in. But when you do it in those states, you actually have to submit the recipes to the local uh, Department of Agriculture and it has to get approved. There's a huge process involved with that. So when it comes to baked goods, it says, yes, you can definitely do that. But things like custards, meringues, pies, again, back to those ingredients that have to be refrigerated or they have to be kept at a certain temperature or they have to be eaten and consumed at a certain period of time. Anything with fish, anything with meat, steaks or chicken or raw eggs, any of that sort. Now, if you're baking something and some of your ingredients are milk, eggs and so on, that's okay because you're obviously mixing that into an overall ingredient that's going to be baked and cooked, like a cookie, a pie, a bun cake, whatever it may be. But just keep that in mind that a lot of times they may have items that, are, that can't be cooked in and of themselves, but as ingredients, they certainly can be, okay? Now also anything like syrups, dried meats, meat products, or anything like vegetables or juices, fresh juices or fresh uh, fruit juices, those are also something that can be potentially bacterial because of the fact that once you make it, it has to be consumed very quickly unless you process it. But of course, if you're processing it, then you're obviously in a commercial kitchen, you're not under cottage food law. 
So, a couple things to keep in mind though. These are the items that you can and cannot make as a cottage foods. The other thing you wanna think about really quick, the side note, every state has cottage food laws set up. Those laws do not protect you though, as a food producer or food production, even though you're making products at cottage foods and you're selling them locally. If someone were to get sick, they have the potential legally, you are responsible for that. I highly recommend you look into some of those links down below where you need to create an LLC. This is a limited liability company. This allows you to have some legal separation from your personal life and your business. And if anybody gets sick, they can only go after the business, not you personally. Cottage food laws do not protect you for that and neither does your homeowner's insurance policy, just so you know. Most of these uh, issues will pop up once in a while under cottage food law and if you don't have legal protections, you can be running the risk of getting really sued and getting in a lot of trouble. So check out having that and even food business insurance policies. Believe it or not, there's actually insurance companies online who can create a policy for cottage food laws and you definitely need to check that out. All right, so I'll wrap it up. If you have any questions about Georgia cottage food laws, the do's and the don'ts and what you can and cannot make under cottage food, let me know down below. And definitely tell your friends, if anybody is starting a food business, we'd love to support our brand new channel here, Cottage Foods Laws. And of course, check out our links to our other YouTube channels. And I'll see you on our next 